Welcome Forex traders. Welcome to my live trading room. This is where I trade systems such as day trading, swing trading, and the full horseman. I want to take you to my new site, which is uh, hedgemaster4x.com. I have the link below, but uh, this is the, uh, the copy trading or the managed account. And basically what it does is it's going to link up um, your MT4 to uh, take trades whenever I place trades on my master account, which, um, which is what you watching uh, here on my live trading channel. Um, so whatever you what you do is you just click on the manage tab and it's going to bring you right on over to my sign me up page. And uh, I also have a tutorial that you can watch video. Uh, the sign me up page right there. It's uh, sixty nine dollars a month. It's uh, twenty dollars for the uh, third party uh, platform, and then I get um, uh, forty nine dollars. So these are the two brokers that I recommend right here for the uh, non U S clients and the U S clients. Now you can use any broker uh, which offers MT four platform and, uh, and allows hedging. And uh, I don't suggest anything less than a thousand dollar account balance. Now I want to hurry up and get on over. Uh, to my stats because I'm trying to um, I'm immediately starting a new video I just got done with all my swing trades um, and markets moving right now so I want to get into it uh, stats right now let's uh, go ahead and uh, window capture okay minimize that and then get rid of that okay okay so my day trades here uh, this is my equity curve, and I trade every single uh, trade I make is is here with you on YouTube. I don't take any trades without recording it. Everything is posted, um, so you can see all the raw trading. No, there's no there's no um, there's no editing behind it or anything. I just push record when I'm when I have something going on or something to talk about, and I push pause uh, when there's nothing. So you see all the stops. Swing trade alert. Swing trade alert. Okay, we're going to get into that here shortly. Like I said, the market is moving. Uh, these are my day trades, equity swing trade. trade. This is my swing alert. trade. Swing trade alert. And my four horsemen uh, equity curve. Sitting through a drawdown right now on that one. And my swing trading. I want to go ahead and minimize this because I want to get into the alerts that I'm getting at the moment, uh, which is my swing trading. So Swing trade alert. Swing trade alert. Okay, uh, we entered in on a swing trade. Let's go ahead and this is the alert that I'm getting right swing now. Swing trade alert. Swing trade alert. Okay, this is this is the swing trade um, that I'm getting right now. Uh, swing trade sorry, alert. Swing trade alert. That should alert. be the last one. Okay, uh, so we're getting the alert right now. Um, this is my entry. On the swing trade, as you can see, we pulled right up into it, went a little bit higher, and now we're pulling down from there. So uh, this triggers for me to move my risk on down to at least here. And what I want to do, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's take this into my uh, hourly swing trading charts. I like that better when it, when dealing with that okay yes so what I am gonna do is instead of pulling it below where my or, or just above where my entry is I'm gonna keep it above the swing high for the for the entire move which is right here you can see it okay that's uh, gonna be my reduced risk I'm gonna mark that down I always keep track of everything Four horsemen alert A U D okay, there we go. J P Y. Okay, and the other thing I want to talk about is we'll get on over to that one. But uh, the other thing I want to talk about was uh, I was in on a, a couple of day trades that uh, if you want to watch the reasons, go back to the last video. But I wanted to exit those day trades. And the reason why is because we were coming right up to a combination of the monthly and the weekly M3. And I knew that price was going to want to go up there, tag it, and then come down. So just prior to that, I exited it out of both of those uh, day trades. Um, and uh, as you can see now, price is rapidly coming off of those levels right now. Um, the other trade that I'm in on right now, which is a break-even trade, is the uh, CAD. Uh, for a swing trade right now. As you can see, we're right at the entry for that. Let's go ahead and uh, drop this down and move right on over to uh, 
Okay, so we are breaching central pivot right now. Um, we're coming close to a stop out on our reduced risk for the euro yen. Uh, we are breaching central pivot right now for the Australian yen. So I do need to uh, doctor this up now. Dismiss the alert. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this down to just above where the entry was or where the swing high from this week is, which is right up here. Give it some room for uh, spread. And pull this down here so I have a reduced risk here. Uh, and what I also want to do is start placing my, um, my take profits right now. So my, my spread is about, oh man, I just lost it. It's moving too fast for me. Okay, so we're about to two pips spread. We're 1.8 pips. So I'm going to go with a four pips from here. Okay, so this is fine. Seven eight three four one. And I want to place uh, alerts to let me know if my stop loss is going to get hit so I can remove all my other pending orders. This is going to be uh, for the Aussie Yen. And then uh, another one right down over here. Again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do, um, do some housekeeping here and fix all my levels. And I'm gonna push pause so I don't bore you. Okay, so there we go. We got everything fixed right now. I'm sitting in profit on the Aussie Yen, slight bit of profit right now on the USD CAD. I have a really tight stop, a reduced risk stop on the Euro Yen. Uh, we already, let's go ahead and uh, look, take a look at that. The Euro Yen came right up. And let's see, where's my Euro Yen? Yep, came, uh, we, we got in here, came up to central pivot. I moved my stop from here to here. So, uh, and now we're uh, right down to where, uh, between my entry point and the stop loss. Uh, and the Australian Yen, beautiful, right there. Right on the uh, M3. And now we're breaching the central pivot and coming down to our first profit target level. This is exactly as expected uh, for the beginning of the week, the month, and the year. We'll keep you posted. That was quite a guy. So I did uh, move my stop up slightly above the, the uh, swing high uh, just because of spread. So right now we're holding tough on the Euro Yen. Uh, came very close to my stop out. I'm going to squeeze this down just a little bit. There we go. All right. 
Everything looks good. All right, everything looks perfect. It's uh, 5.57. I, I, I think I started this so fast I didn't even go over the date and time. This is Sunday afternoon. It's a new week, uh, new month, new day, uh, new year, 2021. And um, we are sitting at 5.56 p.m. So we are about three hours into the new session. So let's go ahead and take a look at my copy trade uh, over into my client's account here. You can see here I have uh, both the trades open right now in my client's account. I do have the parameters set to where it receives my same my stop loss that I put in. Uh, but uh, the, the take profit, I only take profit once my master account closes out of its trade. Then uh, it will it will trigger for the uh, copy all the tr copy trades accounts to close out. Um, so you can change that. You can, you can change it to where you can have the same take profit as I do on my master account. But uh, I this is the way I have it set for for this uh, client's account right now. I'm setting up my uh, day trading charts right now. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. We got a possible, the possible head head fake right now um, down below central pivot. We'll see if that one holds. And uh, I do have uh, the CAD yen bouncing on central pivot. See if that one holds. And uh, let's see here. Still, yeah, we have the setup for the pound yen and nothing on the pound USD. Still too far away for the uh, Aussie US dollar. All right. 6.09 p.m. I'm going to bring back over to the swing trading charts. And drop it down. Okay. We're uh, early in the hour. So uh, we'll see how the, uh, the remainder of the session plays out. All right. It's up. 6.55, five hours until the next hourly candle. We're making a tremendous rebound on the Australian yen, unfortunately. Um, we are sitting break even right now on the Euro yen and uh, drawdown right now on the USD CAD. Uh, and uh, pretty much uh, near break even again on the uh, Aussie on the Aussie yen. Um, still not much to speak about on the Euro CAD, so I have the pending order there. Uh, Sitting in drawdown right now on the swing trade for the USD CAD and about break even right now on the Aussie US dollar. Again, we're sitting around the uh, weekly and the monthly M3. So we're seeing uh, quite a bit of rebounds across the board at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dial this into my day trading full pivots and see any type of setups that we may have for the London session. Yeah, so we do have uh, all of our trade steps marked out right now. And uh, I'm not counting on the Aussie Yen as being a trade setup. I'm going to go ahead and delete out this one over, over here, though. Last week's. Get rid of that. Yeah, it's just not... Uh, the uh, Aussie US dollar is just not did not come close enough to central pivot. I'm kind of surprised on this uh, quick rebound that we're getting right now uh, across the board, uh, but it could be kind of like a um, like a one two three type of uh, top if if it does top out at all. But uh, we'll see we'll see what the London session provides for us. I think it's going to be a very spicy week. Good morning. It's one fourteen a.m. Taking a look at the markets here for the first time. Give me a second, I'll pull up my camera. All right, so we're taking a look at the uh, full pivot charts here. All right. Hmm. Haven't had the sell off yet. Uh, it is, although the London Open, so. Uh, could we be doing a one two three here? Could we be doing a double top here? 
Could we be doing a trade continuation up here? So let's see. Uh, if this is the time to reverse, this is the time to reverse. We're already starting to see it here from the uh, pound. This is the uh, this is the suspected top right here. I s got rid of my day trades right there, and we're coming down into the uh, daily box right now. So let's see if we get that rebound up and away, or if it's going to continue trending lower. So all these are in play right now. We we do need the Australian yen to trend higher. We do need the Euro Yen to trend higher. We do need the CAD Yen to come down and then trend higher. Uh, and uh, we need the, yeah, that's where we're going. So I do need the pound to come down to central pivot or to M2. Mm, it's too far for the, from the uh, central pivot. And I do need the Euro to come back down and through so either that's today or tomorrow's pivots we can keep a clo close eye on all of this let's go ahead and take it on over to okay sitting break even uh on the euro yen and um <laughs> the cad uh, if if this one fails me again the cad uh that's it i'm uh, taking that one off the books completely as far as being tradable uh sitting in near break even pretty much pretty much break even entry price break even uh so yeah not much to say there uh i from the looks of it yesterday it looks like we were getting that reaction that long uh candle down looks like we're going to start to really head down but maybe we're doing a one two three or worse yet, we're doing a, a double top, uh, which will stop me out. Um, if this kind of ranges sideways, I would think that maybe we're actually going to be doing a continuation. But, uh, I mean, hey, anything can happen. We did have stimulus checks pass. We have a uh, money printer going burr. So, um, yeah, uh, it's just uh, this is typically the time that we turn around. Um, just because of uh, the uh, a lot of money is being uh, recalled for taxes and such so but uh, hey you know that's that's the new market we're in right now so I do want to talk about uh, those some of those changes I, I was thinking about making with the back testing and and uh, looking back at years past, this is more or less a phase that the market's going through right now. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a couple of videos ago that I made on uh, Thursday, I believe, but, yeah, right before uh, the New Year's, um, the market was going into a phase where it just wasn't giving me an, an entry. So if we have a sideways box, uh, it wasn't coming down into the box far enough to enter my, my trade. Um, and also if I was if price was going into the take profit zone like this here or, or like here it wasn't coming down far enough to take uh, entries um, it's just kind of like kept going right so I, I'm saying that this is just a phase of the market uh, and it will I'll, it will usually go right back to uh, the way the market's been reacting or, or the way that it's been moving. It's just uh, a temporary phase in the market. And, and, and to be honest with you, I don't have enough data. Um, if, this, if this phase was to, was to stay um, the norm for an extended period of time, I just don't have enough data right now to suggest changing any of my entries um, now, uh, in the beginning of the hour, um, I can uh, attempt to take, let's say we have price with the spread way down here, and the top of the spread is up here, and I'm, I'm supposed to be taking an entry right here. 
um, I will be willing to take something that is more like a normal top of the pivot uh, buy as long as all the setups are there. Um, but once that end of the uh, first hour uh, ends, and if I don't have, if, if price just never, uh, if, if the top end of the spread just never comes and triggers my buy, I will um, move my entry. I'll show you a little bit more of a, you know, scenario once once we get there but I'll place my uh, entry right back where I'm supposed to I'm still waking up guys give me a break we'll uh, we'll go over those scenarios as they occur but uh, I am expecting um, I, I, I am expecting the move down maybe we're gonna get some um, bull traps along the way I still am going to trade my uh, my system my day trading system. Um, that's I have built in a, um, risk tolerance or built in risk adverse techniques into the uh, system so a uh, little small little loss here and there is, is okay um, so let's wait and see how the London what the London open provides right now we are seeing the move down uh, currently on uh, back down to central pivot for the uh, pound yen um, is this a two leg correction just to rebound or is this a continuation of a stir step down? Let's see. Let me pause it right here. It is uh, 121 AM Monday, the 4th of January, 2021. Let's go ahead and measure, measure this here real quick. 10, 10 pips. Twelve pips. It's a twelve pip. It's not not much. Twelve pips. <sighs> Let me wake up a little bit more before I make a decision on that. Let's take a look here at another one. Uh, that was similar distance last week that would have bode well for me 12 pips to that wick right there uh, I need to go through and find out what is an acceptable distance for each of the currency pairs because they all have a bigger range starting to see price come down right now in the CAD yen switching on over right now to uh, to my dark charts you can see it a little bit better now I'm going to take this on over to Ethereum right now. We kind of have a a large candled body or a large candled uh, wicked uh, went all the way up to near 1,200 um, on the daily chart. And it doesn't show all the data on here, but uh, the high was 14. Let's drop this back. I used to trade on that platform, but uh, I don't trade crypto anymore. It's just a non, not enough setups for me. I'm too busy tracking. Uh, I, I'm invested in crypto. I'm invested in, invested in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, and uh, I track uh, I, I just don't have time for tracking small little trades on cryptos uh, I spent all that time tracking uh, Forex because it's more consistent but uh, we went all the way up to uh, near 1200 so about $200 away from all-time highs on uh, Ethereum
and that's since that we had that breakout yesterday but uh, right now we're getting a big wick big big wick uh, hopefully this is not a local blow off top for the ethereum because it needs to rebound quite a bit more off of uh, Bitcoin <laughs> alright so let me go ahead and fix this chart up here a little bit more this is what I've had I've had these support and resistance here for a long time and this is uh, 15 let's go into a daily chart All right, this is Ethereum all time. And uh, here we go. So I have a little bit of resistance right in here. Maybe it's uh, running into. So it's a layer of resistance. Let's go ahead and take a look at that a little bit closely here. It's gonna be from these candle wicks right here to this guy right up there. Let's drag it all the way over. And, uh, you know, I'm going to change this to a lighter blue since it's not a heavy. Oh. All right. So it's this entire range right in here. And let's go with. Uh, let's go with something light. It's a gray. Not really what I was expecting there. Alright, so yeah, that was, uh, that's the resistance coming from down here. Um, I wasn't expecting that to be a heavy resistance zone. Or Ethereum, we could we could just be temporarily pulling back from there. Maybe a lot of profit taking that from there right now. But uh, and man, look at that volume that came in yesterday, and we're getting a lot of volume again today already. Yeah, you can see that volume came in yesterday. The highest volume that we've had since way back in um, Jan in uh, 16 January 16 January or sorry March still trying to wake up forgive me so yeah we have a quite a long wick here bouncing between support and resistance I would like to get above all this right here and make it go at our main, <clears throat> the main level that we need a break. Alright, so I went ahead and dropped Ethereum down to the 15 minute chart, and this is what I'm looking at right here. It's a big range. Uh, from 12,000 all the way down to 950 and uh, we'll see if we get that bounce right here at the uh, support level and uh, let's see if we get another retest uh, of the uh, $12,000 mark or if we break down and continue down from here or maybe even something like more like this but this is the uh, this is the uh, point of breakout right here and you can see here how we once we broke this resistance we went all the way up to the next level of, res of resistance okay so I am uh, taking an update here uh, 223 a.m. this is the last time until the USD CAD proves itself to me that I will be trading it um, on the full horseman. So I will need to record this down here. Uh, it So I will show you why if you haven't seen before. Okay, so let's go on over. 
So yeah, we're still in the drawdown here. So this is the USD CAD. The majority of this drawdown, and see yesterday was the third three Jan. Okay, so uh, let's go on over. This is the reason why USD CAD. So this is the main reason why is uh, the CAD has been a very poor performer. In in fact, it leaves me in the negative uh, since the. Um, the zero line is right here and uh, you, so we're, we're well below it right now so yeah no more I'm, I'm not trading the cat anymore it's just hasn't it, it's not working anymore um, I have I've had barely any profits out of it and more drawdown from it so uh, yeah USD CAD's done that's it that was my last um, that was my last try on it so I will keep monitoring it but I won't be trading it if it does start to uh, have several months um, of, of a potential profit uh, then I will take a look at tiptoeing back into it again but um, yeah I can't uh, I can't keep trading this thing when it when it does this right here on my equity curve that's the um, four horsemen with, with just the extracted USD CAD stats on it. So yeah, that's it for, for the USD CAD. It's killing my it's killing my stats here. Uh, the, a lot of this right here is contributed to the USD CAD. Taking a look here, um, I'm actually going to uh, possibly take the uh, swing trade stop here shortly on the USD CAD. We're going to have to take a look at that as well as, as uh, not trading it on the swing trading either. We're not getting the big sell off yet um, that I was expecting, um, which would force the CAD up and everything else down sitting a little bit here on the uh, pound yen and uh, not much across the board though uh, not much across the board as of right now it is uh, 237 sorry about that I have my camera blocked I hit uh, 237 AM and uh, we're starting to see that move on the pound and uh, I don't see congruency with the euro euro is pumping higher it's killing my CAD right now it's also killing my Australian uh, the yens are uh, the, well at least the pound yen is moving down um, but uh, I don't see congruency across the board right now uh, so um, yeah we're uh, we're sitting really close to the stop out on the uh, USD CAD for the swing trade and uh, pretty close to the stop out as well on the swing trade for the Australian US dollar. So uh, yeah, it's just not uh, this, this, this cat, this uh, Euro USD move right now is kind of dictating uh, what's happening with dollar pairs at the moment. Let's take a look here at my Ethereum. All right, and there we go. We had uh, we were testing the broken out resistance turn support, and we fell right through it. So we're now we're come down to the bottom level of support. We'll see how that reacts. That's also going to come in, come into contact with my 200 EMA. Yeah, Bitcoin's also having a pretty big sell-off at the moment. Let's go ahead and switch on over to Bitcoin. Take a look. All right, 
there we go. Um, so, so far, this is what we have. I have, uh, here's my 200 EMA, or sorry, 21 moving average on the four hour chart. So it's interesting to see if we fill the gap and come all the way down to the uh, 200 moving average on the four hour chart. All right, it's uh, 3 a.m. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at everything on the uh, full pivot charts. And uh, still don't have that rebound on the CAD. Looks like uh, we're probably gonna end up getting stomped out on this. Uh, we're, uh, we're right down. I was hoping that we were gonna get this rebound. This is the uh, weekly uh, support level right here and I have my stop just below it for the swing trade and uh, it's looking like we're, we're just not getting that that expected bounce out of it um, and uh, this wick right here is not not helping me out any at all so uh, yeah that's uh, I'm gonna be looking at um, not trading the uh, CAD US dollar uh, for any type of swing trading, which includes um, Four Horsemen, uh, until it starts to improve. It's just a one directional currency pair right now, uh, lately, for the past like four months. It's either going up, straight up, or it's going straight down. And that leaves me with uh, no, uh, with no good uh, entries as far as swing trading or Four Horsemen. Four Horsemen is just a, a branch of uh, swing trading. So, uh, as far as any type of uh, trade setups go, my pound uh, is uh, currently, I need to remove this trade setup here because we we broke below the uh, central pivot. So we can still get the bounce right here at the uh, M2. We're gonna take a, take a look at that. Let's go ahead and remove this. That's not a current trade setup right now. Um, right now, the Australian Yen is has does have a trade set up here what we do need is for price to break above central pivot we do have a trade set up here on the cadian i do need it to attempt to the downside before we uh, look for the confirmation and uh, i do have a trade set up down here on the euro yen we do need it for it to break up uh, before the confirmation and i am out on the cad uh, that's that's it for the cad uh, and uh, not looking good either for my Australian yen. Um, I knew I do need to draw out this this box though um, on that. So give me one second. We're going to go ahead and take care of that here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cat's killing me. And that's why we keep track of, of everything. So the CAD is uh, This is uh, not day trading. Five one one zero. All 
Okay, drawdown continues on the swing trading. Thank you, CAD. Okay, and just to make sure, I'm going to pop on over to my swing trades and take off the CAD. Um, I just haven't had anything good out of it, so this one right here is going to change to red. Okay, so that marks uh, CAD yen, USD CAD, and pound, US dollar, all no-goes for swing trading. Yeah, see the CAD just keeps tanking. There's the CAD. And that's killing my uh, Australian US dollar swing trade as well. Because as the CAD goes down, that being a commodity also moves up my US uh, AUD USD, which is also a commodity. And they trade inverse to each other. Directly related as well is uh, the Euro USD. Taking a look here at the uh, Bitcoin sell-off. Still uh, waiting to see how the uh, 21 on the four hour reacts. Also closing the gap as well. This is my, where my, oh, there we go. See, there it is right there, right on the 21. And that closed the gap. This is my 21 right here. So let's see how that holds if it does zoom out and take it to uh, yeah there's my one minute chart so I got my uh, one minute chart here this is my 15 minute chart my hourly chart my four hour chart All right, ETH is dropping down also. <clears throat> this is going to be our first decent size uh, sell off in this uh, bull rally, in this bull run. We're down below 30,000. We're down into the 28s. 28.7. These uh, sell-offs in Bitcoins uh, can happen very quickly. It's just all the leverage traders, all their stops getting hit. It's causing a cascading effect. And it can actually present a really good buying opportunity. Okay, and there we go. We're getting the move down now to 27.9. We still have another gap back here. We have another smaller gap back here. And uh, those are all the way down. The farthest one is like all the way down to like around 18,000. Gaps don't have to fill. Probably will probably fill the, uh, the larger gap. <clears throat> But uh, on the daily chart, in fact, we are coming down to the uh, 21 moving average on the daily chart. I'm going to go ahead and switch this on over to my daily. And, uh, yeah, so this is the uh, sell-off. Um, this is with all the gaps and stuff, so my moving averages aren't exact on it. Let's go ahead. Uh, in fact, I want to bring it over to my leverage trading platform here whoa that's not the greatest so you can see here that's my 21 right in here so we'll see how that holds as support and uh, I can tell you a lot of buyers are gonna be right in here for sure 
Um, the 21 is going to, what's going to happen is it's going to move up and skirt that right there. So that, that could be uh, that could be a buy, a buy zone for a lot of people right now. We're sitting at 319 AM. Let's go ahead and move on over real quick. Take a look at every, the Forex market. Still sitting about the same where we were. Getting really close to my stop out on the Aussie US dollar. Pound has been moving down on the uh, pound against yen has been moving down. Um, like I said, I've been expecting uh, beginning of January a turnaround in the markets. Unfortunately, we took a stop out on the CAD. Um, let's see how far down the CAD moved below my support to stop me out. This is my swing trading. No, let's go to my swing trading. Yeah, okay. So here we go. This is uh, my support level right down here. This is where I normally place my stops, and we came down right below it. We're down way below the M2 monthly. And uh, yeah, so I was thinking this was going to be the turnaround zone right in here. This is the M2 weekly and the M2 monthly, and the CAD just it's it's a one-sided currency pair. It just goes in one direction lately. Let's go. Uh, let's go back to Bitcoin. Just picking up some buy orders right now. Right on that zone that I was talking about. I think it has the potential of moving a lot further down, but this is a decent area to pick up. Uh, if you're leverage trading it, pick up at the 21, um, and then as you get a rebound, move up your stop just in case if it comes back down again. You can see that volume and volatility kicking in. Ethereum still holding above 900. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause here until we get a uh, decisive move. Go back on over to Forex Market. I don't want to run up the time on this video. Okay, so taking a look again, once again at Bitcoin. You can see how the buyers did step in at exactly where they're supposed to be buying. There's the uh, 21 on the four hour. The uh, 21 on the daily is right down here on the uh, daily chart. And also this here is the buy box for the uh, weekly pivots. Again, I don't trade uh, cryptos with pivots. Um, yeah, they, they do work, but I just don't, uh, they, they don't work as well as Forex. Um, sometimes they just smash them pretty hard. So, uh, a lot of times they obey them, like you can see in here. Um, you can see how, how it works out really well, but, uh, you know, it's the, the, also the problem is you get these big gaps. And if you have like a, let's say you have a, a stop loss down here, it can actually gap over your stop loss over the weekend and, so it's just a, I, and, and plus it's just so volatile. I, I rather just invest in in crypto. But um, if you do trade it, uh, these you know, this is a, kind of like a little um, possible buy zone right here that that uh, traders are buying up, buying them up at the two uh, the the daily, uh, sorry the uh, day trading pivots, the swing trading pivot buy zone, the four hour uh, twenty one, and I also have a, a daily twenty one right there. So. Yeah, that's kind of the reaction that we're seeing right now. Let's go back over to the uh, Forex charts. 
Um, still, still kind of uh, sitting. Um, I was kind of watching the daily uh, or the uh, the um, day pivot here. For the Australian yen, we're just kind of, or yeah, for the Australian yen, we're just kind of hovering above it right now. And uh, let's see here. I'm still uh, still sitting here on the uh, Aussie US dollar with my stop loss just above for my swing trade. So I just don't have anything to report right now. I do, like I said, I am expecting for the markets to turn around uh, in the beginning of January. Also, take a look at ETH here. Uh, this is the uh, su support box here that I was talking about. And uh, we also have the uh, 200 moving average right there. And that's exactly where we went down to. So let's see if we can hold support in here and continue up higher. Or if we start breaking below this, then we're probably going to be coming down to this support box right down here. That's what I have for ETH. Uh, again, we had that big, big massive rally all the way up to near 1,200 earlier today. All right, taking another look here at Bitcoin. We're getting that uh, bounce right from the uh, buy zone on the daily pivots. We're getting the uh, bounce from the weekly pivots and we're getting the bounce from the 21 moving average on both the four hour and uh, the 21 on the daily which is just it's it's it basically skirts both of them the uh, 21 on the four hour is a little bit higher but the one I really like to pay attention to is the one on the daily and that one just skirts the uh, bottom of the wick so you can see buyers are stepping in question is is uh, is that gonna hold again like I said um, Whenever you see a volatile move like that, it's whenever the all the levers long traders are have their stops just below price and it cascades down. And uh, so a lot of uh, buyers, what they'll do is they'll buy at the uh, a confluence of uh, pivot points. You can see here a pivot point, uh, the uh, buy zone pivots here on the on the uh, daily pivots and uh, the uh, the daily 21 moving average, which is, which is skirting that bottom of the wick right there. So. Um, and then what they'll do is uh, they'll move up their stops rather quickly. Um, so if this continues higher, if that gets a rejection and continues higher, then uh, they're they're in risk free. Um, but if it continues down below, then they'll also hit their stops as well. That's uh, that's way a lot of people trade those volatile dumps like that. Usually, a lot of times it ends up just being a wick down and then continue on up. Let's go back on over to the Forex chart. Yeah, Bitcoin's already up above uh, 30,000 once again. All right, so uh, again, a little bit of a rebound right now on the pound. Let's go ahead and take this over to the full pivot charts because I want to see if I have any trade setups. Okay, yep. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and mark that out here. This is the uh, bounce off the M2. And now we just have to breach the uh, central pivot. All right, we're sitting here about 4.15 a.m. And I'm watching all the point of controls. Still uh, nothing confirmed on the Aussie yen, the pound yen. Um, I don't have the breakout during the London session for the CAD yen. And uh, watching for a possible break of the point of control here on the euro yen, I still need it for it to make a couple of candles up higher and make a, a, a gap, a, a, some daylight in here before I take any type of buy. Uh, we do have the trade set up down here on the, uh, on the full pivots chart.
Okay, so uh, I still have confirmation here. As you can see, we're coming right back down to the point of control here. Um, this will allow me to have at least this candle and two more candles to take a nap. So I'm going to wake up in about 40 minutes from now. Time is 4.19 a.m. And I won't be missing out on anything else. I'm taking a look across the board right now. Okay. Yeah, I won't be missing. So I'm going to take a, uh, let's see, this is a 10 minutes and then plus 2.30. So yeah, 40 minute nap. Okay, waking up. It's uh, 5, 5 a.m. About a minute before 5. And uh, starting to see a uh, possible double top here on the Aussie dollar, which is good. Seeing the rejection um, at the point of control for the day on the pound yen. Seeing a possible rejection of the point of control on the Aussie yen. Um, maybe like a triple top going on over here with the pound dollar. Uh, still don't quite, maybe... A topping out process over here on the euro US dollar. Stand by. Turn off my alarm. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I do have actually a, a trade confirmation. Might be a false trade confirmation, but uh, I have to take it. So. Um, Let's go ahead and take it to the uh, full pivots and just verify here real quick. Day trade full pivots. <clears throat> and uh, this one's going to be the euro yen. Yes, so I do have the trade set up. Okay, yeah. And uh, the spread is 1.6, so 3. Okay. One two six four one four. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and place a stop. Down here. One two five seven eight two. Guess where the take profit's going to be? One two seven two six nine. Let's go ahead and take a look, quick look at Bitcoin. See how, our, how the bounce is doing. Okay, there's that long wick that we were talking about. That long wick. All right, so far the bounce is doing okay. And uh, Ethereum. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so we're still stuck in that zone right in here right now. It is uh, 5.04 a.m. Yeah, I'll take a look at that pound sell off. You can see it right now. Really glad I got out up here, or wait, a little bit lower. I got out right here on my day trades from uh, last week. These day trades that I, I bought right here. Or was it this one? I bought right here and I bought right here. Let's uh, erase that and do it again. I bought here and I bought here. And I got out 
right, uh, right about here, or earlier today. Okay, I just got a four horseman alert. Let's go ahead and minimize this on the Eurocad. Okay, we are uh, approaching central pivot right now. And uh, let's go ahead and... And I will be removing that pending order. I just want to uh, point something out here. Look at the CAD. It came down and stopped me out on my swing trade exactly right where I have my stop, below the uh, support level. So, uh, yeah, this isn't, um, it, it's just toying with me here, you know, so, and then, there we go. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not trading the CAD for a while. It's not supposed to be doing that. Go ahead and drop it back on over to my, there we go, getting that move now. So I don't have anything showing for a little while. I'm going to take another 45 minute nap. All right, and uh, it is uh, 6 a.m. And I am getting the move on the uh, Euro Yen I have my penny order in place there. Um, nothing else going on at the moment. I, wow, Bitcoin has really responded well so far. On that bounce. There it is. Right back up to uh, 31226 And Ethereum is back over the $1,000 mark. Okay, we got that bounce right in that two, coming right out of the box. All right, 7.30 a.m., just got a uh, alert <clears throat> for the Euro Yen Four Horsemen. Okay, here we are. And uh, I'm going to actually raise this a little bit higher. New alert. And then uh, let's go a little bit higher. Okay, that's fine. And I do need to record down the win. And it's not much. Okay. 
All right, so it's uh, 8 01 a.m. And uh, just taking a look here real quick. I'm just waking up for my nap. Yep, we're getting the move uh, down on the pound as expected. A little bit on the uh, pound dollar, definitely on the pound yen. Uh, possible double top right here on the uh, Aussie US dollar. I have, uh, I'm basically at break even right now on my swing trade. A um, couple of failures to uh, break above the daily central pivot. Uh, today for the Australian yen and uh, so it's just kind of been bouncing between um, the lower end of my buy zone and uh, so th it's called a buy zone but um, the way I trade it is I, I want to see it break above the point of control which is uh, the uh, central pivot which is the top end of the box um, so yeah, a lot of sideways movement right now on the CAD yen. No, no trade setups. I do have a pending order placed right now on the Euro yen due to the uh, trade set that we had earlier in the day. Um, going on over to the Euro US dollar, it looks like a possible trade setup for tomorrow. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. We're just watching the pound uh, sell off right now. There it goes. Uh, watching the uh, beautiful recovery from the Bitcoin. Like I said, yeah, that was the buying zone right there. Same in here. That candle wick right down there was where the daily 21 is. And last is the uh, four horsemen. And then we'll take a look at, so we got the four horsemen, um, sitting in a little bit of profit on each of them, not much, barely anything. And then I'm going to take a look now at the uh, Ethereum, because I haven't seen that one yet since I woke up. All right, there we go. Nice, beautiful bounce right off the uh, 200. And uh, it's nice how we didn't even have any bodies of the candles below uh, this support zone right in here. We just came wanted to come down and wick right into the uh, 200 So there we are on that. Uh, we're back up to a thousand forty two. We came all the way down to uh, 889 So that was a little flash crash that we had going on there uh, same with Bitcoin when it came all the way down uh, And uh, let's get back into our Forex charts Okay. And there goes the pounds. Okay, it is uh, 8:04 a.m. Good. I I want it. I want everything to kind of sell off for a little bit. It's just it's been going up for too long, uh, and I want to rebuild for a new for a new bull trend. You know, so if we can get sell off for a little bit and then rebuild for a new bull trend, and uh, we'll get a we'll we'll be able to make more profits that way. So hopefully we can get a nice sell off. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe I'll clock in a, a win here on my swing trade. One swing trade win will take care of the entire drawdown in the swing trading um, equity curve. So all these little losses that I've had recently in the swing trade, uh, one swing trade win would bring us right back up to the top end of this range here. So we would uh, we would basically be looking like this. Yeah. So yeah, these are a bunch of little little losses. These are all pretty much like small little reduced reduced risk losses right here. So. Lots of opportunity to make profit, and it's just been a extreme bull trend lately, which has been crushing my my swing trades. Just no let up. There goes the pounds. All right, say fourteen. I want to go ahead and take this on over to full pivots and see where we're at. So we do have the setup on the Euro Yen still. I do have my pending order. 
uh, do have the setup still on the uh, euro US dollar no pending orders um, yeah we have the setup on the Aussie dollar no pending orders no confirmation here we go look at this uh, we did get price come right down to central pivot we'll see if we bounce right here there's something to watch all right and uh, this is I can take off this because we are now below the M2 right here price is down below it did get the uh, trade set up again we already talked about that I don't need to go over it got the trade set up on the CAD yen still no confirmation I still needed to come down and uh, trade set up here on the euro yen like I just said and I have the pending order there all right okay so this is what I was uh, anticipating and I'm really upset here with the uh, CAD uh, let's go into my swing trading full pivots here uh, again this is another reason why I'm not too happy with the CAD it came down and stopped me out exactly where my stop loss was right here hidden below the support level and um, so yeah after uh, <laughs> after all of these uh, um, little stop outs that I had with the CAD it finally decided to reverse uh, and uh, there it goes so um, yeah that's uh, I'm not happy with the way the CAD has been moving of course you know that's the market but uh, I another reason why I'm not gonna be trading the CAD anymore on any swing trading systems for a while until it proves itself once again um, so let's go back to the day trading charts here uh, okay so so you, you can see here okay let's go let's go to swing trading again swing trading so this is the way that it's supposed to behave uh, let's go to the here okay so um, I had the cell okay uh, it had a chance to go a little bit higher and it had faked a little bit but it didn't go uh, it didn't go all the way to the resistance level which is way up here um, and once we made the go for central pivot I was allowed to bring down my stop okay and here we come down now um, so that's the way it's supposed to work out just like that uh, what the CAD did was it just kind of kept going and it hit the stop and then and then decide to reverse but of course it's you know doing it on the downside it's uh it was it was uh doing one of these right here just kind of kept going below the support and then decided to reverse so i'll keep doing it on the currency pairs that it's been working on and uh i'm going to shave off the currency pairs that it has not been working on and the cad us dollars is one of them So yeah, 8.40 a.m. and uh, taking a look here at the Four Horsemen, I do have the Aussie Yen coming right back down to Central Pivot once more. Here we go, right back down to Central Pivot. See if we can break that and hold below Central Pivot and we'll be going for the first profit target zone. It's 9 4 a.m. Let's go into the uh, full pivot charts. All right, so we have price breaking below the central pivot on the pound dollar, still within uh, range, of, um, still above the M2. And uh, let's go ahead and remove this trade setup. And uh, I'm going to place it right on over here for now, both of these trade setups. Oh, I got a little crazy. All right, and uh, this one also. Okay, and uh, this one as well. Oh, there we go. All right, we're getting some big moves now. As expected, 
Let's go back on over to. So uh, I only have uh, one one trade, two two trade setups at the moment, but one confirmation on it. Let's go back on over to the uh, the uh, dark charts. A little bit easier to see price. And there we go. We're starting to see the sell off now as we. We're anticipating unfortunately we got stopped out on that stupid usd cad it's 9 6 a.m all right 9 12 a.m bring on the sell-off bring it on there we go got a nice reaction out of the uh aussies and the cads well yeah let's not talk about the usd cad I just want to give a quick update here of what the markets are doing. We are receiving that sell off right now. And uh, I do have that pending order uh, in right now in the euro yen. Uh, it is uh, the trade signal, so I don't miss a single trade signal. Um, I learned my lesson over the holidays when I did not take uh, one or two trades. And uh, that, uh, that went against me. So um, I went back through... Uh, years and years and years and if I just stick with the plan then it ends up working out for me almost every single month I'm in I'm in profit so I'm sticking with the trade plan and not deviating from it except for if we have a surprise uh, interest rate decision take a look here at the four horsemen all right we're getting really close to the first profit taking level right here and uh, I have the reduced risk stop on the euro yen. It is uh, 10 a.m. So we're still uh, about five hours left in the New York session. Okay, quick little update. I did get triggered into the uh, euro yen. And uh, let's make sure that um, moved on over to my client's account as well. And there it is, euro yen. Okay, that's in there as well. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and I need to record this in the book. That's going to be order number 0402. Is it? I have the wrong number on there. Okay. Uh, 0402 it is. go ahead and place an alert to move my st uh, stop so let's go and place the alert on the client's account right up in here And let's take a look at the four horsemen because I do believe, yeah, I did take the uh, the first profit target. So let's go ahead and account for that. It's not much. First profit target level is always not much. It pays for the stop if, if a stop occurs. Look at this uh, CAD. It just pisses me off. <laughs> you know what I mean? The uh, yeah, 
we'll fix that later. Okay, it is uh, 1 14 p.m. So we are still on about uh, an hour and 45 minutes out from the end of the New York session. Just taking a look around right now, sitting on a slight bit of drawdown on the euro yen, and everything else is doing exactly what it was supposed to be doing. Shame on you, USD CAD, for toying with me. Uh, you troll. Yeah. So, uh, taking a look here real quick. I haven't even seen what Bitcoin has done. Um, yeah, so, uh, yep, yeah, nice rebound on Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, yep, yeah, not much more. It's changed. Yep, got that rebound. Okay, perfect. And uh, Ethereum did too. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Man, it's an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to do better. At making this video shorter and not repeating myself so much uh, or repeating the same content um, I've noticed that I, I went to and watched uh, um, uh, my uh, my other video and um, if I'm away from the computer for about 20 minutes I come back and I just kind of repeat the same uh, the same setup and you know I'm not realize, realizing I'm doing that so I'm gonna go ahead and do a better job at cutting that out and making these videos a lot shorter. So uh, stay tuned. I promise you uh, this new channel is going to improve. And uh, subscribe, like, all the good stuff. See you then.